Please join me in the opening liturgy. They found the tomb empty. Indeed, where is our hope? He was put to death. Where is our hope? He suffered and was buried. Where is our hope? Did not the prophets reveal that Christ must suffer these things before he came into his glory? Amen and yes. But what of his body? Does he not walk among us now, and do not our hearts burn with joy and anticipation for life now and forever? Yes, but what of the empty tomb? It is indeed empty, and its emptiness has been replaced with grace. Yes, the tomb is empty, and grace abounds. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning. Welcome to the St. Paul COVID-19 Sunday service for the third Sunday of Easter, April 26th of 2020. And um, I'm grateful that you could join us this morning or whenever it is that you are uh, listening and watching today. Thank you for doing that. Again, we continue to pray for each other, continue to lift each other up. Lift up our neighbors, lift up our families, lift up our church. And um, it'll be over soon. It'll be over soon enough. So we will begin our worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us confess our sins before God our Father. Be glad in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our hope is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean and that we have sinned against you by thought word and deed. Wherefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and employing your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all of our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word. To the end, that by your grace, we may come to everlasting life 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in His name, He gives power to become the children of God and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Now behold, two of them were traveling that day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk? And they're sad. Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things that, which happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and their rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. Join me in the Gospel response. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full on his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his beauty and grace. Do not be foolish and slow of heart to believe. Instead, let our hearts burn within us. The road to Emmaus opens scripture to all who will hear. Let our hearts burn within us. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the early months of 1761, two small earthquakes hit London, England. Right after that, a rumor spread around the city very quickly that a well-known psychic had predicted a massive earthquake that was going to occur on April 5th of that year. There were many gullible people there who were very alarmed by this. Several people moved out of the city. They went to neighboring cities, or they hunkered down and uh, waited out in the camps in rural areas for the big one to hit. And he waited, and they waited. And of course, it never did come. Nobody can correctly predict something like this. But false rumors and false predictions have also spread in this country from time to time. I guess you could say that fake news is nothing new. People have been misled by false rumors forever. And we seem to be stuck in another time of similar fake news. You can't tell what the truth is at all today. I'm at a point where I, I don't know if I can believe anything I hear on TV or anything that's coming from any level of my government. Everyone just seems so self-serving right now. We aren't behaving as our brother's keepers right now, as we should be. And I was hopeful that in the midst of this virus that civility would prevail and leaders would step up and act in the best interest of their people. Not so. Politics still remains the name of the game from every side. And our Gospels from Luke, as well as from the 28th chapter of Matthew, tells us a better story 
of potentially fake news. See, when the soldiers who were guarding the tomb learned that Jesus was gone, well, they went into Jerusalem to tell the chief priests about what had happened. And the chief priests and the elders paid the soldiers a significant amount of hush money to keep them from telling the truth. They knew what had happened. They knew that Jesus had risen from the dead. Instead, they were instructed to say that the disciples of Jesus came in the night while they were sleeping and stole him. Well, the soldiers took the money and did just as they were directed. And the false news of Jesus' disappearance spread quickly around the land. And the two disciples of Jesus who left Jerusalem for the safety of Emmaus had heard an entirely different story, a different rumor perhaps. But they heard it was nothing but a rumor in their minds at that time, but it turned out to be anything but. And it turned out to be absolutely true. See, they had heard that well, they had heard that an angel had appeared at Jesus' tomb and told the woman who went there to prepare his body that Jesus was still alive, that he had risen from the dead. And the men on their way to Emmaus had no idea what was the truth or what to believe. Should they believe the rumors started by the religious leaders that actually made some sense? Or the more unbelievable, remarkable story told by the woman at the tomb? We already know the answer. But try to put yourself in the shoes of those disciples who were walking to, to Emmaus and ask yourself, if you were them, what would you believe? Which story makes the most sense to you? Because certainly nothing like this ever happened before, except, of course, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Now, Emmaus was seven miles from Jerusalem, and the two men weren't wasting any time getting away from the city. All along the route, they talked about the things that had occurred. And while they were walking, the Gospel of Luke tells us that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing them, him. This is a very reassuring statement. Jesus himself drew near and went with them. See, Jesus showed up because he knew. He knew that they were suffering with disappointment because of the weekend's events. They were there when he was crucified. They knew that he was in a tomb. Now they knew that his body was gone. And here they were still in fear of their own lives. And on top of that, they had no idea what really happened to Jesus. Where did he go? But you see, that Jesus didn't immediately reveal himself to the two men. He could have simply showed them that he was a risen Messiah. See my hands, see my feet, see my side? Then all would have been well. But he didn't. He could have taken away all of their pain right there and then, but he didn't. See, this is the reason Jesus did not reveal himself to the men as a resurrection savior of the world. It's all because the greatest blessings that God gives us is not an easy life. It's not making everything pretty and beautiful for us. No. God's greatest blessing to us is the knowledge that he is with us in all of our challenges and all of our struggles, that he never leaves us alone. An easy life is not God's will for his people. And not too many people are experiencing an easy life right now. Many are hurting, hurting from different losses, losses of family and friends, losses of jobs and income. Many are hurting from emotional distress from being quarantined. But regardless of what our loss is, we can find comfort in the knowledge that, well, it is frequently in our time of loss that God shows us a glimpse of his, let's use the term, upper story his greater vision for the world and for the people that he created. The world has spent too much time and energy holding on to its own vision of what God's plan should be for them. Let me break the news to you today. That ain't happening. Not today, not ever. See, we don't need to focus on what we want God's plan to be. We need to refocus on Christ because we are being called today especially today in these times, to surrender to Jesus Christ and his vision of how this world should operate, not our own personal preferences. 
And we are all together in this world right now where many are struggling greatly from an unseen enemy force. We don't understand it. Not once during this attack has God left us alone. And if we allow it, God will use these difficult times to help us to grow. To grow in faith. To grow in knowledge of him and his word. To grow in love for our neighbors. And to grow into a much closer and everlasting relationship with him. This is not fake news. This is the truth of the good news of Jesus, Jesus' resurrection from the dead and his ascension into heaven. Right now, he is there preparing a place for you and I, you and me. This is the truth about Jesus displaying his great love for us. This is the truth about Jesus sending us his Holy Spirit. And when the truth of Jesus' resurrection was understood by the two men on the road to Emmaus, they immediately went back to Jerusalem to share their joy with the other disciples, to share it with everyone who came in contact with. Well, they were no longer grieving, nor were they hopeless. Who could have anticipated something so remarkable? But that's what the truth was. And the most remarkable part of this is in 2020, is that there's nothing fake about the story still. This is a truth for all history, for all time. Because this is now God's time. This is his time to witness his children. You and I step up and share the same truths with an unbelieving world. Now that you know the truth, will you share it? How will you use it? Will you hide it away? Or will you allow it to... Allow the truth and yourself to be energized by it. Will you permit the Spirit of God to serve his children through you? I hope that your answer is yes, and always yes. Yes, I will share the good news that Jesus lives, and in him we will live also. Not only is that my hope, but it is my prayer for you today, that you would embrace and share the truth that you know, and not hide from it. I pray also you would find people in your lives who do not have the trust in them that we have. Lead them to the word of God that can bring them to, to saving faith. Faith that provides blessings to them. Blessings today and faith that provides the wonderful blessing of life everlasting. Most of all today, I pray that you would have a wonderful understanding that you are never alone with God as your true God. He will never leave you. And one day you will enjoy your eternal residence with him where you have been given a place at the table, a table of the Lord. And you have been declared an heir of his heavenly kingdom in Jesus' name. Because no power of evil can possibly take that away from you. It's been won for you by Jesus on the cross and in an empty tomb. Amen. And God bless all of you today. And God bless your growth and your struggles through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come before you with thankful and grateful hearts this morning. And Father, we are thankful that though we are quarantined, though we are isolated, though we are separated, we are still together. We are still together in faith. We are still together in love. And we are still together in your grace. Heavenly Father, we will always continue to be your people. You will always be our God, and we are thankful for that. Father, we raise up all those who are struggling the most in this coronavirus scare. And we, Father, we raise up the healthcare professionals, the uh, first responders, law enforcement, fire service, emergency medical services. We bring them all to you, and we pray that you would provide them every blessing of safety in body and soul. Father, we lift up all those who are anywhere working, uh, where they are confronted by other people who could p potentially deliver this virus to them. Protect them. Uh, that only you can do. Give them your protection, your mercy, and your grace. Heavenly I mean, Father, we, we thank you for the blessings of our church. We thank you for the blessings of your word. And together, let us remain faithful to that, to both the church and your word. And Heavenly I mean, Father, let us continue to live with the patience that you have given to us. And Heavenly Father, where we need more, please increase that. 
whatever blessings that we are needing right now, you know. You know before we need them. And we pray that you would deliver them in Jesus' name. And Heavenly Father, together, we pray the prayer that he, your son Jesus has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And until we meet again next Sunday, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord shower your days with blessings and peace. Let our hearts burn within us as we savor his grace, abundantly and freely given. Amen.